A rescue team searches the forest in the area of asylum in Antarctica for missing members of their group. They find the survivor, apparently sleeping. However, he has been infected by Randolph Syndrome, changes into a monster, and attacks the team. The illness is revealed to come from deep under the South Pole in a place called Asylum, which leads people to explore this new land to discover a cure for the disease or to find what treasure this new land holds. At Research City Southern Cross in Southern Australia, Daniel is one of the applicants for a job as a sleeper for the Arctic Front in Asylum, hoping to become a hero. At the Arctic Front Base in Asylum, Commander Nicholas Kruger, Chief Salvi Svein Grasby, Branch Chief James Chan, and Platoon 11 Commander Vera Rustamova all approved Daniel's application and appointed him to Platoon 11. Daniel goes on his first mission with Platoon 11 Leslie. He is the deputy captain of the 11th Platoon. Reka, due to a serious injury, her right leg was replaced with an artificial one. Larry, due to an accident, he has a prosthetic right arm and a brain injury, which has left him with a complete lack of fear or the ability to feel pain. Monitored back at the base by sanity anchor Sumiri, who gives operational orders. They begin their descent into the asylum, and the platoon continues through the forest. Sumiri detects a magnetic field distortion, and a scarred appears, a huge animal similar to those found on the surface, but mutated by some unknown factor in the asylum. The sleepers attack and defeat it with their advanced weapons, but Daniel fails to act. Later on, they are called on to assist the rescue team being attacked by the transformed member affected by Randolph Syndrome. When they arrive, Daniel finds his courage. After blocking a cascade of bullets, he uses a powerful laser from one of his drones and is able to injure the scarred foot, and together with Leslie, they manage to kill the monster. While still out on patrol, Sleeper Platoon 11 comes under attack by another scarred monster, this time from below the sand. Sumire uses her instruments to detect when the monster will next appear and orders Daniel to fire, but he widely misses the monster. Back at the base, Sumire heavily criticizes Daniel's poor performance, leaving him wondering what his true talent. During cleanup duty, Daniel discovers that Sumire was formerly a pop idol. Daniel tries to talk to her about it, but she refuses to talk about it and leaves. Later, Daniel apologizes to her for raising the issue, acknowledges his own failings and promises to improve his combat skills. Soon, Platoon 11 is given orders to deal with the same scar, but this time they use a different strategy. Daniel and Reka fired into the ground, and Larry ran across the ground to get the worm's attention. When it came out, they hit it with lasers and Larry launchers until it was down on the ground, where Leslie finished it off by destroying the glowing crystal in the mouth. After the operation, Sumi readmits to Daniel that she became a sanity anchor because she did not qualify to be a sleeper. However, she will do her best as their sanity anchor. Later, Daniel is called into a meeting with Commander Vera, who offers him a special mission, something that will make him the hero he wants to be, a mission involving an assassination. A leader is shown giving a speech where he suggests that although Randolph Syndrome may devastate humanity, it also presents opportunity. Afterward, we get a more realistic look at him saying the people in the crowd are idiots and he will begin his real plan. Meanwhile, the group decides to go on a trip to town. They have some time off from their mission, so they decide to explore a bit. Afterward, they encounter thugs beating on a young dealer. They decide to get involved, and Daniel managed to beat the thugs and save the young dealer. Larry tells him that because of his sleeper soldier training, he is now stronger than the average person. The dealer overhears them talking about being sleepers. Then the dealer asks if they can collect seeds from the Vista Paza tree, which grows in the asylum. Daniel doesn't think this is a good idea, but Larry agrees and persuades Daniel to accompany him. In order to reach the asylum while not on duty, the two are forced to use an illegal backdoor. The place they find themselves in is known as the Oasis of the Asylum, and not many of the scarred are around. While there, they encounter one of the exiles, a human who lives in the asylum. Larry asks the girl if she knows the location of the tree, but Daniel doesn't want the girl involved in their mission. Larry believes she can lead them to the plant. They follow her, and sure enough, she is able to lead them to the correct place. Daniel thanks the girl and appreciates her help. Then Larry reveals to Daniel that he wants to explore the asylum himself, hoping to learn more about Randolph Syndrome. Suddenly they are attacked by a flying scarred, which seems to be after the exile girl, who is called Elsie. Just in time, Daniel saved Elsie from an attack by flying scarred. Daniel, Larry, and the girl find shelter in a nearby building. However, the flying scarred still outside, waiting for them to come out. Daniel comes up with a plan to have him act as a decoy so that Elsie can escape. Larry then joins up with him again after leading the girl to safety, but he and Daniel are cornered by the monster. 
Fortunately, Leslie and the rest of Sleeper Platoon 11 arrive to rescue them, but back at the base, they are severely reprimanded for going AWOL. The experience convinces Daniel that he should take the assassination mission offered by Commander Vera. However, he then discovers that the target is Elsie, the exile girl he just saved. On their next mission into Asylum, Sleeper Platoon 11 encounters an exile, and Leslie fights it off with their excellent sword fighting skills. He cuts off the exile's hands and runs away, but afterward he criticizes the others for not helping out. Later, the rest of the team wonders about Leslie's past, so they investigate and track down some old images of Leslie together with Vera. Daniel notices in all their pictures together that there is always the same man standing behind them. Leslie invites Daniel out for a drink. Later, Leslie goes to the bathroom, and Daniel gets a call and goes out to see who's calling him. He sees a little girl and runs away. He tried to follow the girl, but Daniel was lured out and then ambushed by three cultist exiles. Daniel tries to fight back using a pipe that he just grabbed. Leslie arrives on the scene, and together they manage to defeat the cultist exiles. Leslie explained that the cultists, exiles who have gone insane. The Randolph Syndrome sometimes drives those who stay too long in asylums. Then Hayden confronted them, an old associate who is after Daniel. Leslie tells Daniel to escape, but the youth is cornered by a young girl called Nadia, who commands two vicious rabbit-like animals. Daniel manages to capture the rabbit with his coat and escape. Daniel returns to help Leslie, who has been shot in the arm. Hayden missed the shot and hit the pipe at the back of Daniel. He used this to escape and hide. It appears that Hayden knows about Daniel's mission to kill Elsie as he is intent on capturing her himself. Sleeper Platoon 11 is again challenged by a cultist, but before Reka finishes counting to fire, Daniel accurately shoots and destroys it. It seems Reka doesn't like this. Hayden reports to his superior, who savagely beats him for failing to capture Daniel, inferring that he would not fight his former comrade Leslie, and orders Hayden to capture Elsie at any cost. Meanwhile, Platoon 11 members discuss how to get Daniel and Reka to work together when Daniel always appears to be awkward around her. They decide to have a team barbecue and send Daniel and Reka shopping together for food. They think this could be a good way for the two of them to connect more. However, before they can go back to others, the pair encounter Nadia, who sets her rabbit-like animals on Daniel. The two manage to kick the rabbit, and they are attacked by a scarred man of human appearance. Despite initially trying to act independently, Daniel and Reka eventually cooperated to kill the monster. Later on, the two have a conversation about anime and manga and discover that they share a common interest in anime. Vera meets with Commander Kruger, who gives permission for the LC mission to proceed. Before they leave, Vera gives Leslie an engraved ring and a silver necklace for good luck. Platoon 11 prepares for its mission, with only Leslie and Daniel knowing its true objective is to assassinate LC and the rest of the squad doesn't know the true target. Meanwhile, a celebration to honor Elsie as the child of God begins in a grand mansion in the exile village of Riwe. Leslie leads Platoon 11 into the village, where his plan is to lead Elsie to a window where Daniel can shoot her, and he gives Daniel a note in case they become separated. Leslie, Larry, and Reka infiltrate the party dressed as servants, and while they roam around, their presence is detected by Hayden. Leslie fights it off with excellent sword fighting skills. Afterward, Leslie escapes and notifies Vera that their plan was leaked but she refuses to call off the mission. Meanwhile, Reka manages to lure Elsie to a window by setting off a fireworks display, but Daniel hesitates to pull the trigger. Instead, he sees Leslie cornered by Hayden in the balcony. He saves Leslie instead by shooting off Hayden's arm, but the mission has failed. Platoon 11 begins their retreat back to the base, but they are pursued by a spider match. Leslie tries to lure the spider to stop chasing after the team, but just as he successfully defeats it, Hayden catches up to the group and shoots Leslie's flying device with a sniper rifle, causing him to fall into the deep darkness below. After the incident, the squad manages to find Leslie's body, and they all return to the base, where they organize a proper funeral for Leslie, but Vera seems uninterested. Meanwhile, Hayden re-enters the mansion in Rue and takes the guests hostage in an attempt to capture Elsie, who was earlier taken to safety with Master Karika. Daniel offers to help pack up Leslie's belongings and later the other platoon members join him to help him out. Afterward, Daniel received a message that he needed to meet Vera. Vera tells Daniel that the plan is still going ahead, but Daniel asks, what is the point of this plan that cost Leslie their lives for? And also adds that she aren't sad that his friend died. Vera reply, will you be satisfied if I say yes? And will he bring him back to life? Then Daniel proceeded to leave and search for the good luck charm Vera gave Leslie before the mission, but he could not find it. 
Platoon 11 is given a new mission in Ryoi, and this time Vera leads them. They arrive at the mansion, which is now deserted, but Vera finds the ring she gave to Leslie. They encounter the villagers who have been released, but are now under attack from many scarred. The platoon opens fire to get the attention of the monsters, but their weapon is not much help. Then Vera is much more effective when she attacks the monsters with a scythe-like weapon. She manages to take down numerous monsters on her own. After being rescued, Chief Jurio shows Vera their sacred ruby-colored pyramid crystal containing a ring, which was to be given to Elsie at the ceremony. He gives it to Vera after she offers to take the treasure to Elsie. When the platoon returns to base, Daniel tells Vera that he agrees to proceed with the plan to assassinate Elsie and that he refuses to let Leslie's death be in vain. Following Vera's failed mission to kill Elsie, she is reprimanded by the Antarctic Front Steering Committee and warned not to put the organization in danger. Daniel goes to the bar, then he questions Leslie's waitress friend about the note Leslie gave him in the village of Ryoi, which contains a set of numbers. Meanwhile, Ron Blake and his team, who are guarding Elsie, split up to make it more difficult for Hayden to capture her. While the group is looking at Leslie's collection of photos, Daniel enters the set of numbers on the note, which retrieves a photo taken on a Platoon 11 mission six months ago, but the location is unclear. Later, on the next Platoon 11 sortie into the abyss, Vera leads Daniel to a spot where he can shoot Elsie, and he recognizes it as the location shown in Leslie's photo. There he finds the silver necklace from Vera and Leslie's notebook, along with a note that he found the truth about Vera. All three groups, the cultist exiles, Hayden, and Platoon 11, come under attack from Scarred while fighting each other and trying to achieve their own objectives. Daniel is dealing with Hayden, so he can draw him away from his comrades. Eventually, Elsie remains in the hands of Iceman, who is aware that Vera has the power to make time repeat. Vera is again called before the steering committee and warned that it is her third and last chance to succeed. Later, Vera reviews her current situation. The Iceman recognizes that she has the power to make time repeat, and although she selected Daniel because of his sniping ability, he is still immature. She also revealed that she tried to go back in time so many times to make it work, and what happened yesterday was new to her. Daniel arrives to request a meeting with Vera, and she immediately suspects that he wants to withdraw from the mission and is prepared to agree. However, when he asks her to join the others at a barbecue, she blurts out yes and immediately regrets it. The team arranges it so that she has little opportunity to avoid attending by taking control of her schedule. Under the guise of buying food, Daniel visits the asylum to read Leslie's notebook and find out more about Elsie, but still returns in time with the food. Vera is late for the barbecue, but she does join the team for the social occasion, and the event goes well and everyone has a good time. However, Vera later tells Daniel that she is removing him from the platoon. Daniel awakes from a dream and notices his suitcases packed to leave. He is called before the steering committee, which says that he was removed from duty because of his unauthorized entry into the asylum. Later in the day, Daniel joins the platoon for farewell drinks, but after being pressed for details about his intentions, he goes out for fresh air. He finds Vera's associate, who is dying after being shot by Nadia, and he tells Daniel that Vera has been set up to get the Erika ring. Nadia assists Hayden in locating and obtaining the ring he is looking for. Vera appears to stop him, but Hayden lures her to a location that has an advantage for him. Vera started to attack from behind, hitting his new robotic arm. Then he shot her, leaving her injured. He reveals that he knows that Vera has repeated the LC assassination mission a number of times, but it has always resulted in Leslie's death. Daniel suddenly appears and disarms him, but Hayden escapes with the ring after setting off a series of diversionary explosions with the help of Nadia, and together they escape from the base. Vera then gives Daniel the ruby-colored pyramid crystal, the Akura, which has a secret power, after she has successfully convinced Hayden that the power is in the ring. This is her last order to him. Take the Akira crystal and leave this place. Daniel prepares to fly out to Argentina but returns to headquarters and finds Vera and the others out on a mission in the asylum. He immediately ran down to the asylum, killing the monster in his path. He finally tracks them down to a church and finds them all dead, and a massive monster appears beneath the church. A powerful laser from the monster's eyes hits him, but then he again wakes up in his room with his suitcases packed beside him. Daniel realizes that he is reliving recent events. He goes out again for farewell drinks with the platoon, but modifies his actions, which slightly alter the events during which he meets Vera's agent. Travels to the asylum and encounters Hayden and Iceman, where Larry and Reka fail to kill Elsie, who transforms into a monstrous scarred, killing everyone. Even Daniel did not survive the attack. 
Daniel again wakes up in his room and repeats the same event. He gradually comes to the realization that since Vera gave him the Akura crystal, he has had the power to repeat events. He returned alone to the church to save Elsie. While they were running, they were attacked by cultist exiles, but he managed to defend her. Hayden then spotted them and shot them. Nadia took this opportunity to took Elsie. Just in time for his team to arrive, Hayden was taken care of Larry and Reka while Vera and Daniel followed Elsie. Then, before they save Elsie, Daniel reveals that Vera's obsession to kill Elsie and prevent the sixth great extinction is an attempt to kill her younger self. If she kills Elsie, she will disappear too. However, they are late, and Elsie transforms into a monstrous scar, leading to the complete destruction of the Antarctic base and an eruption of fire. However, Daniel again wakes up in his room and realizes that Vera has experienced these events many times before and is desperate to stop the cycle from repeating itself. Daniel starts the day from the beginning, and this time he decides to do things differently more. He explains how the Akira gives him the ability to repeat time to his comrades, and they join him to defeat Nod and Hayden. Daniel defeated Hayden with the Sword of Leslie, and admitted he lose completely this time, and he knew Daniel was using the time repeat. Then he threw himself off the top of the building. Daniel then confronts Vera with the knowledge that she is the future Elsie, who has been pointless in trying to kill the young version of herself to prevent anyone from obtaining her destructive power. Platoon 11 heads into the abyss to prevent Iceman from merging with Elsie, and Vera joins them. Iceman begins the process, but the transformation is incomplete, and he becomes an unstable tentacled monster. He grabs Vera to prevent her from dying and repeating the past events, unaware that Daniel now has that ability. In a last-ditch attempt to break the cycle, Daniel thrusts the Akira into the center of the beast, destroying it, but not before his body is pierced by multiple spikes, fatally wounding him. However, LC is released, and he passes the Akira back to Vera. As he dies and fades from existence, his essence is transferred into the crystal, leading Vera to believe that he will return in the future. Thank you for watching till the end. Please don't forget to subscribe.